Hi, everybody. My name is Hussein Cornell. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out here to Unite 2020 and partaking of all of our wonderful content. Uh, secondly, I'm super excited to be here. And the reason is, is that I will be presenting to you Unity Art Engine, how to unlock the power of AI assisted artistry. What do I mean by AI assisted? This means that Art Engine leverages machine learning as it also leverages uh, procedural workflows, which means you get the boast of both worlds to be able to enhance and speed up your material generation and uh, texture uh, creation, editing, enhancing, and so forth. So there are three things that we end up doing in Art Engine. Without any further ado, I'm going to jump in and show you the interface and explain what is actually going on behind the hood, as they say, or inside the uh, the engine, right? So first of all, uh, it has been trained using example-based workflows. So it has seen when somebody takes a image like this fabric that I have here and has painstakingly used other software uh, that we are very familiar with for photo editing, where we have to do a stamp tool or a paint or a heel tool and so forth and so forth. Yet it is a very manual process. You add a layer, you paint some more, you add another layer, you paint some more. If, if you noticed, I don't have any layers here. What I have are nodes and they're non-destructive. When I do an operation, it doesn't change what I have like many software out there does. If you add uh, a crop or you add brightness or contrast many times in the other software, what ends up happening is that those get baked into that image. You have to go back to a prior version. Well, I'm not changing this image. I am just editing it and then I'm going to output a new image with whatever changes I want. A new image or a series of images that make up a full material. So what Art Engine is doing, it's allowing me to cut down on the mundane tasks so I can really get to creating amazing art and not just being stuck behind a desk uh, painting and painting and painting just to get uh, to where I want to get to. So without any further ado, we're going to go through some of these nodes and check out how it works and why would I use Art Engine over any other system when it comes to speeding up my material creation. So first of all, I want to show that this is where my uh, library of imported assets lives. This is kind of the raw data I am bringing in that I'm going to work on. Then down below, I have this uh, tab that says nodes. So this is, you could call it my node library where I can go through and check them out or I can also use the search function to get to those nodes. And then we have a 2D view and we have a 3D view. This is a representation so you can kind of see what's going on. It has some basic uh, shapes that ship with it. You can also load your own 3D assets with their own UVs if they have a particular UV and you're working on a texture map that is um, you know, unique and custom for those UVs and for that map. Uh, that's where you would do that. Right now I'm just doing a normal texture that I want to create into a seamless texture. We can see in our 3D view this is not seamless. Uh, we can also click in our 2D view and we can tile the view so we can see, okay, this is not seamless. I got it close. I took a picture with my cell phone. I didn't have time to get very expensive uh, or the uh, budget to get expensive uh, scan data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn Art Engine into that so I can get some really high fidelity looking cloth uh, in fabric by using some of the nodes and very quickly generating some of this. So I'm going to add a crop. So we have our workspace here where I can drop our assets that we've imported into our library and we can drop in our nodes. I can also press the space bar and select any of these that we wish and we can then apply them to our stream. Again, this is a non-destructive node-based system similar to the way Houdini or Nuke work. So we have our, our inputs here. You notice I did a crop and it cropped my image, but you're like, how did you get it to crop that? How, how do you know what you're cropping? Well, 
when you first initiate a tool, I have already done the crop, you will get these handles. And you can always come back to them and you also get a context sensitive menu in the properties. So then you can you know, apply your adjustments and continue on. So one of the really cool features that uh, Art Engine has is the ability to unwarp patterns. Uh, I just use this textile because I know that textiles are sometimes very difficult to be able uh, to unwarp. And you notice I've already done it. It almost looks like a seamless texture. Now we're gonna go back here and we'll see what this is like. If I were to paint this by hand, it would be very difficult to get this lined up properly and make it look correct. So what this uh, pattern unwarp does, it takes a look at uh, what I am doing. I'm actually on the crop, so we're gonna go to our unwarp pattern. So I took a little sec segment and I said, okay, this to me looks like a pattern that I wanna identify. Then I went ahead, I identified the pattern and it is going through and looking at all the possibilities. And I said, okay, you know what? I actually even found more than what you told me. I'm saying that every single one of these little squares, which is very true, and then it lays out kind of a, a grid and then it unwarps it. And here we have it. It has one warped it. You have seen it live. I, you know, we, we did that operation together right here. And now you're like, holy moly, this looks like perfect. You can't even tell where that line is. Yet, it is not actually a seamless texture. If we were to look in our tiled mode and zoom out, we can see that there is variances in the different colors. That's super okay because if I wanna unwarp a pattern, I sometimes just want to have, let's say if I had a, a carpet or a, um, you know, something for an interior design that had certain features, maybe red on one side, blue on the other, and green, etc. I wouldn't want to lose some of these features. So I wouldn't want it to basically change it all or repaint it. Uh, I would want it to leave what I have and just unwarp the pattern and that's fine. I, you know, we'll work with seamless later. In this instance, it worked almost like a seamless. But that brings me on to some other nodes that we have. So I decided to bring in a, a gradient removal, which means I, you can see right here I have a lighter segment, and right here I have a darker segment. What it's going to do, it's going to even out the color gradients in this image. So I'm gonna double click and you'll get to see what it has done. Again, all the levels um, I have access to here, so I can I can crank it all the way up, and it's really gonna change everything to the same level. Or I can bring down that intensity to where I feel it doesn't you know, take away some of my image, and it still works just fine. The other thing I can do as well is remove the seam. If I want this to be a seamless texture, let's say I am making that, uh, making a, a carpet or so, uh, you, you might say, oh, it already is seamless. But if we zoom in, we notice it is not seamless. Uh, there are some differences. There's a little bit of blurriness here. It is very sharp here. It kind of matches up, but not quite. I would have to go in and paint this and figure it out. Now let's see what happens once we apply a seam removal. So I'm gonna do a seam removal. Now you notice this is nice and sharp. It's beautiful. You cannot tell that this has had a seam at one point. It did a wonderful job at painting that up. It made all these little stitches, all these little hairs, all these little things look like they belong where they are. Yet we're still not done, right? This, this is really cool for a single image. You notice I didn't have to use a single paintbrush. I didn't have to go in and um, you know do a stamp tool and so forth. No manual labor. All I did was connect a node and execute that node. And voila, I am done. Um, I didn't even have to go in and change where I had selected my um, pattern for my pattern on warp. In some instances, you might have to specify uh, that pattern if it's not so easily seen. Then uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a material based off of this color map because it wouldn't be a material generation software if it couldn't generate materials. So material generation node is really cool because I can come in here and very quickly create my normal map, my height map, 
my ambient occlusion map, and my roughness map. So this node is kind of like a very quick material generation. Again, I might notice that uh, you know my normal might be going backwards instead of forwards, and I have the access to flip X or flip Y. I have the access to increasing or decreasing some of the levels. So we have all these options available to us, which makes it very powerful. I can come here and say, hey, I want to change how this operates and how this looks. Now that looks a little bit better for me. Now it is facing the way I want it. You know, maybe my ambient occlusion could be a little bit darker. And then we say, okay, go ahead and generate that map and do that for me. You notice very quickly, it just generated these maps for me. So now this is a whole new set of maps. And here we go. We have the ambient occlusion, it's a lot darker. We have our roughness, it has its changes and so forth. And then our diffuse. And if we go back into my, um, my tiled mode, you notice it is still a perfectly tileable uh, material. But now we have all the other maps attached to it. I did that in a matter of minutes. And uh, that is super powerful. I can come in here and give it all sorts of patterns, all sorts of uh, uh, images for it to do that seam removal. So continuing on, you notice I have added this export to Unity node. So we have a few different output methods. We can do a normal output, which I'll show you here. So a normal output is basically just sending maps to a folder of your choosing. So I'm gonna come in here, you can see some of the possibilities that we can export. Uh, again, Unity Art Engine is uh, agnostic to the rendering platform you're going for, towards. If you need maps for Maya or Houdini and V-Ray or Arnold or you're using Mantra or you're using um, Keyshot, regardless of what they are, you can export them out of Art Engine. You can also export them to any real-time 3D platform like Unreal or Unity using this normal output. Yet, we also have a export to Unity. So this is the only platform where we can actually export a full high definition render pipeline lit material with all the connections already made inside of that material. So it's not just the grouping of those maps, but also that connected material within the 3D application of Unity. And it also exports as uh, universal render pipeline lit and your standard PBR. So that is what's really cool about Export to Unity. Uh, further on in this demo, I am going to show how to import the, these maps into Unity using the new import from Art Engine um, plugin that's available in the Asset Store for free. So continuing on, I want to just um, show you some more applications here. So I took pictures of a uh, tree outside here in my backyard. As we know, most of us are working from home due to circumstances uh, of COVID and so forth. So I did a quick crop. I resized it because I wanted it to be a perfect square. And then I decided to run a JPEG artifact removal. So if you have images that have, uh, you know, that have some um, um, artifacting or they're not that great, you can go in and fix them up a little bit. This image is actually pretty decent. It doesn't really need it, but I didn't have that terrible of Im images to show you this, yet it, it does some, some really nice wonders. The uh, next step is going to be into trying to replace areas that are not, you know, you don't like them. Like this, this I, I don't want this, this really dark shadow in some of these areas. So I wanna be able to refill that. Um, in mini software, we would have to go in and paint. We would have to go in and and use uh, a, a heal tool and, and, and so forth. Well, we have what's called the content aware fill. So we still have the ability to paint out a mask. Uh, you notice now my brush tool option is now available and I can make my brush size bigger. You can see it in the 3D view and in the 2D view, kind of what I'm doing. And I can, uh, you know, have spacing so so it uh, paints smoother or or less smoother. And then I have my flow and my hardness for that brush. Uh, I've gone in and done some painting already of this area. 
and then I've connected this mask paint into the mask layer of the content aware fill. So what this is going to do, it's going to leverage that machine learning and say how did people in the past or when I was being trained uh, solve a problem like this? What is the best way by looking around in the surrounding of the image that I've been given, how can I repaint it to make it look as if it was a photograph, as it belongs here? So very quickly, and this is astonishing how fast Art Engine can come in here, look at its surrounding, and repaint this. Uh, it is almost a real-time uh, solution at this point. It's just so fast. It goes in, it repaints, and you can zoom in and look around, and you will be surprised at how amazing this painting has been done for us. Uh, I didn't have to go in and take my afternoon to paint this. And again, I could do it over and over again. I could change the feathering, I could change the seed, I could just experiment until I get it exactly how I want it. The other thing that we can also do is uh, instead of generating our uh, materials with the material generation node, what if I have more than just these, uh, than, than these five materials? What if I have a curvature map or what if I want to use one of the old bump maps what if I have other maps that I want to have access to how do I access those well you can generate various different types of nodes so we can actually type here and just start looking at you know I type GE so generation so we can we can generate several different uh, maps so that's what I have done so I've generated a normal map so I did my content aware fill and then I generated my normal map, but I realized that I could, you know, bump it up just a little bit more. You know, I, I could go into the intensity and get a little bit more. It's going through in real time, but I'm still not getting the really fine detail or the really, really harsh detail because it's kind of giving me a blend of those with just a general uh, normal generation, which is what most software that's out there does. Well, we have the cool option of being able to mix these two. So I can mix two normals in a blend normal node and get the fine detail of the foreground and kind of the heavier detail or larger maps of the background and incorporate them to get a much more um, believable in a much more beautiful normal map. So going, uh, going forward from this, I then generate my height map using my normal. And then using my height map, I generate my ambient occlusion. I generate my roughness map and so forth. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, the removal of some of the shadows. So you notice I had a lot of shadows. And many times we're going to be doing photogrammetry or we are going to be uh, using textures on a surface that we're going to light differently. And we don't want shadows going one way and our light is going in the same direction and the shadow should be going opposite. So it just, you know, people that are watching our content are not going to suspend this belief and they're gonna say, yeah, this, this looks fake, this doesn't look right. Uh, and we're going to lose some of our audience. So we have to you know, try to delight some of these. So we have a couple nodes that we can use. We have a hard shadow removal and we also have the albedo generation node which has a delighting node to it. So the way these work is that they analyze the image and then they try to remove the shadows that are there without removing uh, the data that's underneath. And it works pretty decently. I'm gonna double click here and you guys can kind of see. I bumped it up a bit high just to, uh, just to show you guys. But you've noticed that now I've got some of the information in these areas. And again, that is just the view of my albedo map. Now I'm going to mix it all back together with all my other maps. And now you noticed I have gotten myself my map. And I also have the hard shadow removal and I'm going to, you know, not take out as much. And I'm going to go back to my albedo generation here and I'm going to drop this down just a little bit so we don't remove too much of the information. But here I go. I have a map that has 
most of the shadow information removed, the crevices look like they should belong there, and so forth. I could go back to my ambient occlusion map and say, you know what, maybe we uh, increase the, um, the, the levels on it, and that's really cool. I can come in here and grab a, a levels node and put that in between and say, you know what, I want to make this have a bit more influence and I can come back to my material and notice that now it has a you know a bit uh, darker uh, areas of ambient occlusion and so forth I could do that with all of them uh, then again I did my seam removal afterwards so now my seam removal is going to have to look back and apply that seam removal to all of my maps and keep all of the really cool normals and all this stuff that I did in one go so let's see how fast that goes so it goes through and you noticed it was like seconds i could not go into any other photo editing software and generate a seamless map this quick that's just amazing uh this is uh basically the bread and butter. When I worked in visual effects, in uh, uh, visualization, we had to use a lot of maps. And many times we ended up just using libraries that were pre-existent. And that, you know, later on kind of makes you run into problems because you don't have content that is unique or your own. Everyone has already seen that map. Everyone has already seen that texture. Um, and it gets kind of boring. Oh yeah, we use that in our project as well. Look, they copied this, they copied that. Here, you have your own unique map that you have very quickly generated with this seam removal. Which brings me on to creating evergreen content, which means I want to create content that I can reuse but change. So it brings me into leveraging this machine learning to make some changes. I want to come into my mutation node and uh, mutate what I see here. So I am going to, you know, put the parameters that I want and now my map has changed. If you notice in my 3D view, I have a completely different map. Let's go back to the seam removal. That's what we had there. And now this is my mutation. Then I added another one just for fun and I changed some of the parameters here. So let me double click here. And now we have a new map so we can see the difference from one to the other. And again, if I wanted to fix this, we actually have a node that can go in there and you can edit your mutation. And this is the mutation revision node. So I can come in here and revise my mutation, which is really, really cool. And let me just go here and we can go to my revision, and then I can say, you know what, there is uh, certain areas that I don't really like, or you know, maybe, maybe it's this little piece that, that I want to remove, and then I can execute this, and it's going to go in, and it's going to change that revision or that uh, mutation for me, and you notice I am doing this real time. Uh, I didn't uh, pre-bake this, I didn't change this, and it went through and it fixed that little spot for me that I didn't want. So that is super powerful. So we're not just stuck with whatever uh, the mutation was at first, at, and I was able to go in and clean that. And you notice I have a few more. In essence, I would have cleaned that, uh, that spot that was very obvious in my content aware fill, right? It was, it's, it's this guy right here, it's super dark. I would like to fix that, and I can. I can actually go in and paint the mask and fix it up. So going forward, uh, we're going to talk about full-blown materials. So what we've been talking about so far have been just singular maps, taking one map, going through a string of operations through our nodes, and cleaning it up, getting rid of the seams, identifying patterns, uh, unwarping them, um, and then generating materials from them and then exporting them. But what if I already have a material library and I don't care about making new ones, I just want to edit the ones I have? No problem, let's do it. So I have a, uh, a material, so I want to explain to you what a material is inside of Art Engine. So in Art Engine, if you have a grouping, and now I'm here in the library, I'm just going to select this group. 
I can come in and say I want to create a material. So I'm going to create a material and it's going to look at the names that I have. And I am going to say this is uh, material, material 006 because that really identifies it as something I want. I should probably just say this is wall. 0, 02 or something because this is a wall texture that I have. So, okay, I created it. So now if I go to just show materials, you'll notice that I have this wall material, which is actually the same one as well. No problem. It's actually a metal panel. So I made a, a new version of it. No problem. Uh, going forward, I want to be able to edit. So this I actually used in a real project. I was working with David Levy and the guys over at KitBass 3D. We did a quick demo on how to use Unity to very quickly set up an animatic for a film. So we took some of Sparth's um, inspiration from Sparth, and if you haven't seen his artwork, I would say go check it out. And uh, we decided we were going to use uh, his content, of course, with his permission, to make this little film called Scout One. So you should check it out. We It's um, available through Kitbash's um, Twitch account. Um, so yeah, check it out with David Levy. So what we had to do is, you know, make this material match this world. So I actually had to use one of these really smart nodes called a color transfer node here in Unity. But I didn't want to apply that color transfer to my normal, my height, my ambient occlusion, or my mask map. What I wanted to do is just apply it to the diffuse. So I have a split material. I can bring in my material, open it up, and then look at the individual maps. Then I grab that diffuse, and I grabbed just any image. I could put anything here. I could actually even bring out a um, just a, a, a color, um, a solid color here and connect that as well. It's not as fun because you only have one color, it's not as variant, but I could. Um, I could bring out a uh, noise, so here's another, uh, another one I could bring out a noise and I could do some changes here on my noise uh, and pump that through. Or I could bring any map in the world I would like to. This is what I wanted because that's the color. And then I bring it in and I do that transfer. Look at how quickly it took that and decided what would look best. Again, I have complete um, control of what is going on here. Let's say I want that darker blue that's right here to maybe be a different color. Maybe I want it to be white because that's, that's what I want. And you'll notice very quickly it changed it to white. Uh, maybe this one here just to add variance, I want this to be pink. And it might not be enough because I have a lot of blue, but if we zoom in, it probably did add some pink in there and, um, and so forth. I mean, I could, I could go through and, and do quite a bit here and it's going to do its best and we can already start seeing some of that pink based on the color selected. And that is really, really powerful to be able to go through and change just that diffuse and then pump it back into my albedo. So here I go, I've done my color transfer and I sent it back to my compose material. Again, my compose material node can allow all sorts of maps. I can come in here and have up to 16 different maps if I wanted to. So as you can see, now my compose material has all of these maps inside of it and I can output all of these to either in export to Unity like I explained earlier, or just a normal output of that material. I only have, what is it, six or seven, um, I think it is uh, six different, uh, well, I guess it is seven different maps, so we're gonna stick back to seven. Again, you have an option of many different uh, maps that you can export, and you can even do other, which would be your own custom maps for that render pipeline or render engine that you're using. So 
what if I want to affect the channels of those maps? So we know inside of the Unity Mass map, we have a few different channels. So we have a dirt map, we have a metalness map, we have a uh, AO map inside. So we can also come in and do a split channels. So I have access to the RGB and alpha. So I'm gonna click here and you'll notice it looks kind of weird and that's because we're looking at all of it at once. So let's look at just what that dirt map is. I added a levels map like I showed earlier and you can see I can go in and change it to my heart's desire. I can come in and change my ambient occlusion here and say, you know what, I want it to be lighter or I want it to be darker and so forth. And I can make those changes there. I can come in here and say, you know what, I want it to be shinier or, or less shiny in these areas based on that map. And then I want to merge all the channels together. And this is your normal mask map. Usually looks green inside of Unity. And that is because of the RGBA showing through. Then I want to bring them all and compose that material. And now I have this really cool, you notice I made it uber shiny. Uh, I have this material that matches much more closely this image than originally. So you can see a huge difference from the original map to what I did. And very quickly, I was able to generate this. You're thinking to yourself, yeah, that's pretty cool, Hussein, but what if I wanna do this across 500 maps? What if I have a full library that I wanna change? No problem. We have a batch input and batch output. So that is exactly what I did. I took my batch input and I grabbed all the images inside of a folder um, that were being used as diffuse. And then I said, you know what, let's pump these. Uh, um, I, I did a, a levels and gradient removal, so I, I, it, it wasn't as crazy. And then I'm gonna do a color transfer. And here we go. On this one, I only used, uh, I guess, five or six channels. I could have used more, I could have done 10, I could have done 20, it doesn't matter. And as you can see, it's very powerful because across the board, I can come in and make some serious changes. What if I want that to be red? And you notice it now that has some red information in it. Uh, what if I want this one to be green? Why not? Let's, let's have some fun. We can then change that to green. Um, these targets and this source, it will generate something that is um, based off of the image, but again, you have access to make it your own style. And again, if you're if you're using uh, maps and textures for uh, sprites or different 2D characters, you can actually change their clothing, you can change their, their outputs very easily this way. Again, even 3D characters that have different shirts or different pants, uh, if you're doing interior design, maybe you have a pattern that you wanna change. Maybe there's some flower that's red and you want it to be blue. You don't have to go in and repaint it. You can very quickly process this and across the board change all your maps. So let me actually open up my uh, hard drive here and um, so let me open up my hard drive here and I will show you really quickly what I'm talking about. So these were my original maps inside of this folder and I went ahead and did a couple of different variances so we could get some more stuff. So if I go back to my recolor, this is where my output node in that batch process uh, rendered these out to. And it was very quick. And as you can see in my original, I had some really, really stark colors here. Uh, this was a landing platform that we used on the project and What's really cool is that, you know, I could not have red and black because we wanted it to have that snowy, bluey feel. And we go back to the recolor, it redid it and it looks great. If you notice, first I had it a little bit too dark and I said, you know what, let's lighten it up. And then I was actually able to lighten it up even more once I got into my 3D application. Again, I could have gone in and changed that blue to something else if I wanted to go even further. This was mainly done for this example and for a quick uh, turnaround on my KitBass 3D project. Now imagine I can do this batch import and output to 
all my nodes. So I could put it in here and grab a whole bunch of Im images that are you know, somewhat similar. I probably wouldn't be doing a, um, a seam removal on things that are completely different from one from the other or a, um, I guess on this one, you know, the content aware fill is, is mainly for one map or one selection because if I do a mask paint, uh, you know, maybe that other image might not have things in the same area. So some things are meant just for a um, a particular instance, and, and then we have others that are meant for a whole slew of things. The other really cool node that I didn't talk about yet is we have one that's called Upres. So I can come in here and uh, I can, uh, and I think it's going to place it in the last place that I was. And where did you put my upres node? Let me just double click here and do it again. Upres, here we go. There it is. I don't have to look for it. So what this node does, it allows us to upgrade our images to something better. So let's say I have this image. It's 16 by 248 or whatever, and I want it to look better. So we look at it, it starts pixelating and so forth. So I can come here and say, you know what? I want to upres this. So I process it and it's going to go through and very, very quickly up res my image. And you'll get to see now it's double. It's, it looks so much better. Look at the difference. I'm just gonna go in so you can see the difference. That took mere seconds to do. And what I can do is I can up res the image of all my materials in one single shot with that uh, batch uh, import and output. In output, Again, I can also do um, several of those operations you saw. Again, I wanna just uh, clarify that you can have really, really cool, um, let me just zoom in and zoom out so I can see where I am as far as my, my seam removal. Uh, most people say, oh, you did a demo and you just showed like one, one type of uh, texture or, or one kind of thing. So here you can see I did like trees, I did fabric, um, and now I'm going to do kind of rocks. And we're gonna go through some of this and just, just to show you some of the nodes we have available. I generated my maps, I had all my maps out here. And again, I have quite a variance in my seam, and we can even see with some of these, there is, you know, it, it's a pretty, pretty notice, noticeable seam. I do my seam removal, bam, I've got myself a perfect image that I can map on my floor. I can mutate it, I can mutate it again, and then I can export it. And again, if I wanted to change that mutation, I could then use the node that I showed you guys and gals up here where you do a revision where I can go in and select areas that I did not like that I want to be redone. So that is cool in essence for just editing and upgrading. What if I wanna create new textures? I can do that as well. So I needed a, uh, a texture for a Unity project that I was working on where I was doing an interior, uh, which hopefully I can share with you guys. Uh, we will be sending a link for a GitHub with that uh, with that project, which all of it was um, created, at least all the textures and materials were created inside of Art Engine, so you could use and have some variations inside of um, that interior. So I took some lines, I took some uh, marble I found on on uh, on Google, and then I took a Gaussian nose. I did a little bit of gradient removal, I resized them to be similar, and then I blended them. And I ended up with kind of this uh, this feel. And I sharpened it so I wouldn't lose any, any of that fine detail. And I went through. So I wanted this to be kind of a, uh, a material that was going to go on Chrome. And now you can see kind of this variant material that I created for my render. So then I did a export to Unity. And this is where uh, our next segment comes in, where I will be showing you how the export to Unity and import to Unity uh, Artomatics uh, Art Engine um, plugin. So as you can see, I named this HVAC002. I come into Unity and I have this HVAC Chrome 002 material. And there I have it. It created uh, a HCRP lit material 
with the uh, albedo or my diffuse connected to my base map, my mass map connected to the mass map, which has my smoothness and my ambient occlusion and my metallic all in one bundle, and then my normal map. And of course, I can come in here and make changes as I want uh, to add variances. And again, let me show you where that is. And uh, I think this, no, uh, here we go. So this is now my material mapped to my HVAC. So very quickly, I didn't have it, I created it, why not? and it worked just fine for what I needed. Again, we have this carpet on the floor and I'm going to zoom in as best I can. And uh, I wanna show you what we did using the color transfer. So you notice we have some of these gray nuances and let me zoom in even more. We have all these little gray lines and bluish lines and white lines. And we said, what if we do a really quick um, color transfer. So let's try it. And look, I have a completely new carpet design. So imagine if you're doing interior design or you're doing uh, visualization where you just need to make some of these changes. In the past, trying to repaint something as complex as these little, you know, colors inside of a carpet like this would take you a bit of time. Now I can do it in a matter of milliseconds. So that is super cool. Again, hey, let's change it up even more. So you have the ability to do that in Art Engine very, very, very quickly. We did the same exact thing on this table. And as you can see, I did some color transfer and I did some changing of maps, but very, very quickly, things that take seconds. So that is, in a nutshell, the beauty of being able to very, very quickly generate and create materials, the plant materials. Um, every single thing you see in this scene was generated inside of Art Engine. So this brings me to my next step. Okay, so how do I get these from Art Engine into Unity? You showed me the export. I see you have it here but how does that actually work? So let me show that to you. So first you have to go to the asset store. You would have to search this online and then make sure that you select, and let me just load this up, the art engine importer and add it to your assets. And once it is part of your assets, you have access to it by selecting under my packages, my assets. So anything you've bought, or selected, uh, be it paid or free, and this of course is free, you can get your Art Engine Importer, then you would import that to your project. And what it's going to do for you, it is actually going to give you, and let me go here, a new Art Engine Importer setting. And I get that by going to Assets, Create, Automatics, Automatics, sorry, I, I can't say that word very, very uh, clearly, uh, but you can read it for sure there. And uh, then you click on Art Engine and you'll notice I just created a new one. You can name it whatever you want. Um, you, can, you know, you can come in here and just say, you know, number two, whatever. And you'll notice that it has um, settings up here. So what kind of shader type do I want those materials to import as? Am I using HR, HDRP lit or am I using a standard shader? If my project was using URP or Universal Render Pipeline, I would get the options of standard or, or URP. In this instance, I want to use HDRP lit. So that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to have that one active. I don't need this other one, I just need one, so I am going to delete that from uh, my assets. I'm just gonna use this one. Um, and I don't want to delete the, uh, the material that's being created by Art Engine. I'm just gonna keep that there so I can edit it at a later time if I would like to. You can delete it as well if you want to, if you're sure that's what you want is your material and you're done with it. So let's do this. I'm going to jump back into Art Engine and uh, we are going to export. So this is Chrome 002. I'm just, you know, for the fun of it, I'm going to call it 003. Why not? 
and it's going to go into the same folder and then I am going to come to this export. I can either press on execute selected node or export. They do the same thing. So very quickly what we're going to do, we're going to uh, go to my export to Unity. I can either execute my node here or I can click export here. And then I would click export. It would process through. As you can see, I, I, sh I could have done um, execute selected node and it's going to go through and make sure I have all of these maps and on top of it, it's actually going to combine them into a full material that then Unity can open up. So let's go, let's go on over to Unity and uh, open it up and you notice automatically, I don't have to do anything, it is importing that new HVAC Chrome 3. So I'm going to actually go back to my scene view once this is done importing. Uh, I believe these are like 4K textures, so it does take a little bit of a little bit of time for it to figure that out. And if we go to this, uh, here's my HVAC Chrome 3. I put it inside of the folder of the other, and here I have my fully built material. So this now has my normal map, my mass map, and my base map as the other one. I can grab it and I can throw it on whatever I want and so forth and then edit its properties to look like Chrome because that's what I initially wanted. So there you have it. In a nutshell, this is how easy it is to bring in a, uh, a series of maps. And the other thing that's cool is that we have access, oops, sorry, I'm clicking into, uh, I have access to those um, maps right here in that folder. So I can edit them if I want to. Um, I created a, a couple instances of them uh, in the background, so I don't need this, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So there you have it. Super, super easy to use and super, super um, robust. Just remember, you have to go to the Art Engine importer and get that as your project. And make sure you have HDRP lit if you're using HDRP and make sure you have, um, and we're gonna go back here so you can look at that, um, at the importer. And if you're using a standard PBR shader, you're gonna do standard. If by any, any chance you have it on standard and you import your, um, your materials, they will come in as standard, and then you're going to have to update them to be HDRP if you want to change them to HDRP lit. So that is the only caveat, is that you do have to make sure that you select the right image type. The very last thing I wanted to touch upon, um, as I could go on for quite some time, and due to our limited time, I won't, uh, I will just show you a couple other nodes um, that can really help you out in your process and you can experiment um, with Art Engine. There is a free trial available and we have a lot of resources online. So we're gonna go right quickly, right back to Art Engine. And what I have loaded up here is a textile image, um, or I think this is like wool or yarn or something. Uh, I'm not an expert at it, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is a node called multi-angle to texture. So what this is going to do, this is going to be basically um, a photogrammetry system. So I have my input light and in, in, I will set up my camera, uh, put my, my subject that I'm gonna photograph and then I can move my light around and you can start seeing how that is going to affect those shadows. So when I, when I get a normal map or when I get a height map, we know that we might be getting those normals if we're pulling that information from an image and we don't actually have a 3D model to go off of to be able to extract those, we aren't getting the full picture of what is all around. Here I'm able to get eight different um, uh, views at, of different lighting and then I can bring them in together and then I can pull my normal map out of there. And you know we we've uh, we've cropped it so we get the uh, kind of the image we want and then we did a pattern on warp on this material and you can see okay that is the pattern that it selected and then I mutated it and made it into a really beautiful pattern and then I did my height generation and my normal and I'm just going to go to the very end just so you guys can see how much. I can actually, 
how much information I can actually get. So now I have the full all the way around. I, I did push it a little bit more just so you could see it in the viewport. But when you're rendering this, uh, as far as cloth is concerned, it looks really, really beautiful in the render engine. Again, the display, you can come here and you can change some of the tessellation settings. So I can add tessellation to this render view so then it looks smoother than it was. So in a nutshell, here is uh, Art Engine. I really want to see awesome projects that you guys are creating with Art Engine. Join us on the forums. Join us um, in other uh, Unite sessions that we have, Unite Now sessions. And uh, happy painting and happy uh, building your 3D content. Thank you so much and take care, everyone.